Along with an actual karate testing in progress, you will see every technique required to test for the yellow belt. You will see how to properly execute each movement. We will also demonstrate some common mistakes. The belt. To tie the belt, hold it at the center making sure both ends are even. Now bring the center of the belt into your mid-stomach and cross over and back. Bring the ends back to the front and make sure both are even. Now cross the left end over the top of the right end. Transfer the end in the left hand to the right hand and tuck under. Now take the right end over top of the left end and pull the right end up through the loop. Now pull both ends tight. Again, make sure both ends are even. In the attention position, both feet are flush together with your hands at the side and fist form. Back is straight and head is lifted high. The bow is a sign of respect. To bow, simply keep your back and legs straight and bend at the waist. Look up with your eyes in the direction of your bow. You will bow when greeting others and when addressing a higher rank person. The bow should be executed when entering and leaving the training area as demonstrated here. Lining up is done by rank with the highest ranking person lining up first. From the attention position with both feet together and hands at the side and fist form, the first person in line raises their left arm while opening their hand. The next person lines up by placing their shoulder on the fingertips of the first person in line and so on. After the front line is completed, everyone drops their left arm and comes back to the attention position facing forward. The second row will line up directly behind the people in the first row. The first person in the second row makes sure they have enough distance by raising their leg. This distance should be approximately one full leg plus one foot between each row. Turning. To turn right, pivot on the ball of your left foot and the heel of your right foot. To turn to the left, pivot on the ball of the right foot and heel of the left. To turn to the rear, place the ball of the right foot behind the heel of the left and pivot around. Now repeat. To go into the meditation position, step out with the left foot and come down on the right knee. Now place the other knee down beside the right. Sit down on the heels of both feet and place the hands on the knees. With your back straight, tilt your head down and close your eyes. You will find more about meditation in the Novice Manual. To come back up to the attention position, step out with your left foot and step back. From the attention position, cross right arm over left and step out to the side with your left foot. Bring both arms down in the center of your body. Feet should be shoulder width apart and turn slightly inward gripping the floor. Weight should be balanced evenly on both feet. Body is straight and head lifted high. To go back to the attention position, bring left foot into right. Please be seated. My name is Grandmaster Ed Copley. I will be the senior testing official here today. As your name is called, we will ask that you come up to the imaginary line on the floor. When you get to the line, please come to a ready position automatically. We will ask you to do several motions that are required within your testing. For example, if you're a white belt, we may ask you to do low defense. When you execute the low defense motion, we may ask you to do it more than one time. We like to see each person do at least each movement twice. Sometimes we may call up more than one person. If we call up two people, for example, in front of one testing official, we may ask you to do four movements forward. 
In other words, we will have you do four movements so we can see each one of you do at least two. If we ask for you to do four motions, make sure that you do every single one of them the best that you possibly can because we may only watch you do two. And if you only did two good ones and two bad ones, the two we watch may be the ones that we grade you on. So do all four motions as best as you possibly can or how many we ask you to do. Now, after we are through with the count coming forward, we will tell you to go back to the line. When you go back to the line, do not turn your back on the testing board. Move simply backwards, and then after you get back to your line, go automatically back to the ready position to do the next motion. Now, you will be judged today from zero to four on our testing forms. On the testing form, for example, if you did a low defense, a zero means that you didn't know how to do the motion at all. One means that you did the motion, but you didn't do it the proper way. That's just, both of those grades are failing grades. Two means that you did the motion right and it was satisfactory. Three means that the motion was excellent. That means that you did the motion very, very well. If you were to get all threes on your testing uh, form, you could get a permanent grade status, which means that you could get the belt plus a strike. Now, this only applies from orange belt and below. Green belt and above are all permanent stripe positions. In other words, if you test for green belt and above, you will automatically get a permanent grade. Now, if you were to get a four, which happens in one out of every 10,000 kids, you were to get all fours, it could mean that you could be up for a double promotion. Is there any questions? Okay, if not, let's get ready. Christine Boothby, up. Jeremy Lifshay, up. Run. Thomas Boothby, up. Form one. Now remember not to look at the other person. Rely on yourself. If you looked at the other person, they're doing the form wrong, that means you would execute it wrong also. Gicho Hung Ilbu. Gicho one. Non stop. Ready, start. Form one. All stances are front stances in Gicho Hyung Ilbu. From the ready stance, look to the left and prepare for left low block. Turn and left low block. Step forward with a right middle punch. Look to the right and prepare for a right low block. Turn to the right and right low block. Now step forward and left middle punch. Look to the left and prepare for a left low block. Turn to the front, step in, and left low block. Going up the center with three middle punches. Right, left, right, and ki. Prepare for a left low block. Turn all the way around and left low block. Step forward with a right middle punch. Look to your right and prepare for a right low block. Turn and right low block. Step forward, left middle punch. Look to your left and prepare for a left low block. Left low block to the front. Go down the center with three middle punches. Right, left, and right. Ki. Prepare for a left low block. Turn all the way around and a left low block. Step forward and right middle punch. Look to the right and prepare for a right low block. Turn and right low block. Step forward and left middle punch. Back to ready. Coming forward in a front stance. Front stance. Left foot, left hand, and right hand out to the side. Ready? One. To assume a front stance, step forward with the left foot and strike down with both arms. The feet should be shoulder width apart and both feet pointed towards the front. The back knee is straight and tight. The front knee has been over the front foot. The back is straight with head high. When marching in a front stance, Maintain the proper foot position and width. 
Common mistake. Stance is too narrow. No balance is maintained this way. A stance with proper width is more stable. Another problem, not keeping the back knee straight and tight. This may cause a secondary problem of the back heel not staying on the floor. Another common mistake is not having the front knee bent over the front foot. Combined with the back leg plus an improper front knee, balance is unstable. The front knee should be bent all the way over the front foot. The back foot should be pointed straight to the front. Don't lean forward in your stance. Maintain a proper upright position. Horse stance in place. Horse stance in place. Ready? One. Cross your right arm over your left and step out with your left foot, twice your shoulder width. Now sit down like you were riding a horse. Push out on both knees. Turn your feet inward as much as you can. Bring both hands to your side and fist form. Back should be straight with head lifted high. Common mistakes, not sitting down in the stance with the knees pushed out. leaning too far forward in the stance. Feet pointed outward instead of inward. Back to ready. Fighting stance, walking forward. Ready, one. From the ready stance, cross right arm over left and step back with your left foot. Turn your body to the side and bend slightly at the knees. Feet should be shoulder width apart with your weight supported evenly on the balls of your feet. Your front foot should be pointed forward and the back foot pointed at a 45 degree angle. Lead arm should be forward with the fist upper lip high. Back hand should be at the jaw area. Elbows should be tucked to protect the ribs. When moving in stance, be sure to keep the weight on the balls of the feet for good mobility. Okay, front punch coming forward. Ready? One. To make a fist, curl fingers in and then wrap your thumb around. Your wrist should be straight or all power will be lost as your wrist bends. A straight wrist means more power. The striking area of the fist is the two big knuckles. Bring your left arm back to your side palm up. Now step out and punch palm down. Your fist should be right in front of the center of your own body. In a good front stance, make sure chest is facing front and the back leg is straight with the front knee over the front foot. Again, from the ready stance. The arm comes back to your side and you step forward and punch. As you punch forward, make sure the punching arm comes back to your side first. Maintain a good front stance. Go back to line. Reverse punch coming forward. Ready? One. 
As with your front punch, your punching arm comes back to your side first. Unlike your front punch, you will not step out with the same foot as you punch. Instead, you will step out with your left foot and punch with your right arm. Your fist should be right in front of the center of your body. As you punch forward, maintain a good front stance. Go back to line. Double punch coming forward. Ready? One. Bring your left hand back to your side. Now step in with your left foot and punch with the left hand and then the right hand. This is a double punch. You are simply punching twice as you step forward in a front stance. Knife hand strike coming forward. Ready? One. To make a good knife hand, press your fingers together and roll in your thumb. Tilt your hand slightly. The striking area is the bone spur side of your hand. To strike, bring your hand back to your ear and palm facing out. Now step forward in a front stance and strike downward. Moving forward, move hand to ear and strike downward. Maintain a good front stance. Remember, you are striking down with the side of your hand. Go back to line. Side hand strike. Coming forward. Ready? One. The hand comes back to your ear as you step out and strike. The strike is coming out and around, stopping in the center of your own body, about neck high. The striking areas for this technique are the neck, jaw, and temple. Go back to line. Low block. Coming forward. One. From the ready stance, straighten your right arm in front of your groin and bring your left arm up with your palm facing into your jaw. As you step out into a front stance, sweep downward with your left arm, stopping your fist palm down above your left knee. Maintain a good front stance as you move forward. Arm in front of groin. Left arm up and down, keeping a good front stance. Here's an example of a low block against a kick. High block, coming forward. Ready? One. From the ready stance, bring your left arm to your right side. Now step in and bring your arm upward, stopping above your head. Notice how the blocking arm starts at the side, palm up. As one arm moves up, the other starts downward, passing each other around the chest area. Common mistakes. Arm is too low, so you take the full blunt of the attack on the arm and head. When the arm is correct and at an angle above the head, the blow glances off easily. If the blocking arm does not stop directly above the head, you are open for attack. Let's look at the proper movement again. Notice the blocking arm stops above the head at an angle. Another common mistake is bringing the arm up and around from the outside instead of up and across the body. Let's watch it done properly. Go back to line. Outside to end block. Coming forward. Left hand, left foot forward. Ready? One. From the ready stance, bring your left arm to your head, palm out. Now swing your arm out. Your blocking arm should stop directly in front of the center of your body each time. You should be in a good front stance with your arm at the side parallel to the floor. Palm is out as the block starts. Notice how the arm stops in the center of your body as it swings out. 
The elbow of the blocking arm should be protecting the solar plexus and ribs. The fist should be in front of the face, upper lip high. Blocking arm is too low, leaving the face open for attack. It must stop in front of your face, upper lip high. Blocking arm is high, leaving the ribs and solar plexus open. Elbows should be in front of your solar plexus. Blocking arm starts too far out, leaving center of body open for attack. Be sure to maintain a good front stance as you execute an outside to end block. Prepare for front foot kicking, left foot back. Ready, set. Front snap kick. Solar plexus high. Ready, one. Cross your arms and step back with your left foot. Swing your arms down and then back up. Bring your knee up high. Extend your foot forward. Pull the knee back and step down. Bring the knee up, extend the leg, pull it back, step down. From the side, notice the knee of the kicking leg is high as you bring your foot up to kick out. As you kick forward, the leg should extend out fully with your kicking foot bent down and toes pulled back to expose the ball of the foot. Be sure to maintain a good front stance. Foot form. Toes should be pulled back, exposing the ball of the foot, instep pointing down. Proper technique will give you more power. Go back to line. Prepare for front foot kicking. Left foot back, ready, set. Roundhouse kick. Ready, one. Step back with your left leg and bring your arms up in a fighting posture. Pivot on your bottom foot and bring your kicking foot up with your knee pointed out and round kick. Remember, when you kick, always bring your foot back to the cock position before setting it down. Extend the leg out fully as you round kick. From the side, notice how the knee comes up and points out. As the leg swings out, the striking surface of the kicking foot can be the ball of the foot or the instep as demonstrated here. As you kick, arms should be in a protective posture as shown here. Common mistake. The kick comes up straight like a front kick. Now look at the right way. The body turns as the leg sweeps out. You must pivot on the bottom foot when you round kick. Go back to line. Prepare for side foot kick. Ready, set. Cross stepping over and side foot kicking with your right leg. Ready, one. From the horse ride stance, the kicking foot comes up knee high in a cocked position. The foot then travels in a straight line out to the target, then comes back knee high and sets down. To step in as you kick, place your non-kicking foot behind your kicking foot. Cock your leg knee high and kick straight out. Come back to the knee and set down. Cross over behind your kicking foot, cock the leg, kick straight out, come back to the cock position, and set down. From the front view, pay close attention where the cocked foot is. Notice the straight travel as it snaps forward and then comes back to the cock position before setting down. Now watch the movement at full speed. Common mistakes. Kicking with the back leg makes the kick come out like a round kick. You must kick from the side to get proper technique and power. Notice how the non-kicking foot sets the distance to your target. 
Here is an example of proper distancing on a sidekick. The striking area of the foot is the edge of the heel. Back to attention. You two turn and face into each other. Bowing set. One grab the other one's wrist. Pry bar method, ready, set. One person grabs the other with the left hand on right wrist. The defending person pushes their elbow towards the attacker's elbow, prying their arm out through the fingers. As you push your elbow into the attacker's elbow, step in with your right foot. This gives the pry bar effect. This movement can be executed from either side. When grabbed with both hands, simply reach in with your free hand and grab your other hand. Now step in and pull your hand back as you rotate your elbow towards the attacker. Watch the movement again. Common mistake. The most common mistake is the defender tries to use strength to pull away. This is very difficult and almost impossible if the other person is stronger. The pry bar method takes very little strength when executed correctly. The same applies to the double hand grab. Proper technique wins over strength when executed properly. Tom Boothby, uniform in Japanese. Gi. Uniform in Korean. Dobak. Instructor in Japanese. Sensei. Instructor in Korean. Sabam. Training center in Japanese. Dojo. Training center in Korean. Dojang. This concludes your test. The committee will now evaluate your test scores. They will also look at how well you have displayed the character of discipline in and out of the training center. Your attendance record during this course is also considered. All this will take a few days. Your instructor will tell you when the certificates and belts will be presented. Thomas Booth, the up. Yes, sir. Congratulations, Mr. Boothby, on your promotion to Yellow Belt.